These are some of the most dramatic moments from Hell's Kitchen. And what this contestant did single-handedly sent the entire service spiraling out of control. Amanda, Barrett, give me a jacket. Your time's done in Hell's Kitchen. Get out! Get your jacket off! I'm fucking off! Out! 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 Sure. Hey, young man! Front door! Get out! Take your jacket off and give me a jacket now. Let's go. I'm in the middle of service, job. I wish you well. Front door. Good night. Hell's Kitchen has never failed to surprise us with some really shocking eliminations, but these came completely out of left field. Ben. I really want your jacket. I'm giving you one more chance. Oh, thank you. Lacey, Ben, back in line. Like this time from the Quinceanera dinner service from season 11, when something unprecedented happened. If you know, you know. But before that, let's put your Hell's Kitchen knowledge to the test with a fun trivia quiz. Let's see how many of you get all my questions right. So, up first, who is the only black jacket chef to be eliminated during dinner service? Two, who is the fastest person to be eliminated during service? Three, name the first chef to be eliminated while on the winning team. And last up, who is the first male chef to be eliminated during a post-mortem? Yeah, that actually happened. Well, while I let you chew on those questions, let's head back to the quinceanera, the dinner service where things got a bit tangled up for Amanda. Mary gave her the order, three tuna and three Caesar salads. But Amanda seemed a bit unsure. Girl, like, what are you doing? But things took a sour turn when Amanda's tuna turned out to be, well, a total wreck. Hey, hey, look at this one here, look, look, look. Oh, God. Ramsey had to step in and give her a firm pep talk, and this was just a half hour into service. Meanwhile, she was already working on her next tuna. But when Nedra kindly offered her help, Amanda declined. It seemed like she wanted to handle it on her own. I got it, I got it. No, you don't. Man, I'm going right over there right now to help her out. The truth was, Amanda was struggling and that didn't escape Nedra's notice. Her confusion with the orders and the absolutely butchered tuna showed a lack of focus, and not accepting help when it was definitely needed only made things worse. Her constant blunders had the whole team playing catch up. Meanwhile, to stir things up, Ramsey revealed that the men had already finished while they were stuck with a backlog of orders. When Amanda tried to send out another tuna dish, once again, it was a complete disappointment. Something so easy! He asked her who was responsible for searing it, and Amanda initially pointed the finger at Nedra. Chef. Nedra seared it, Chef. I got it. Nedra seared it, I got it. Back off the station, I have it. This little blame game only added to Ramsey's growing frustration. Amid Amanda and Nedra's heated argument, Jean-Philippe had to step in and plead with the woman not to let the situation deteriorate further. I can't hold them anymore. This is an absolute joke. Serious. The tension escalated when Nedra dropped a refire dish, and she blamed Amanda, saying she bumped into her, which clearly annoyed her teammates. Ramsey asked Amanda who was overseeing the appetizers, and she claimed that it was her. In a fit of frustration, she pushed Nedra away, and Nedra decided to step off. What happened next was insane. I don't know, Chef. Look at that! This is extraordinary! Adding more chaos into the mix, Jean-Philippe had to break the news that he couldn't delay the waltz any longer, which left both Ramsey and the women seriously dismayed. Hey. Go. Oh. Did you keep account of that? In the blue kitchen, things were brutal. Hey, hey, time out. All of you. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, that is never a good sign. Hey, hold on, hold on. Uh, hey, hey, I want you to taste that. I want you, to, I want you to taste it. Hey, no, no, taste. hey, just taste it. Get in there. Get in, you. Get in, get in, get in. Turns out, Barrett sent out raw linguine without spinach. I'll fix it, I'll fix it, I'll fix it right now. Oh, come on, guys. 
He knew he had a rough start, but was still determined to make a comeback. However, things took a nosedive when he sent out overcooked kebabs, and something happened. Yeah, that's a charred king stick in a piece of rubber bullet. That turned out to be the nail in Barrett's metaphorical coffin. Ramsey was beyond frustrated and completely went off on him. I'll put more in. There's got a black piece of cinder in there. Six. I want two linguini urgently. Thankfully, Barrett's refire was accepted, but Ramsey wasn't pleased with how the service had gone overall. He made it clear that both teams had turned what should have been an amazing quinceanera into a complete disaster. Ray then announced Barrett as the men's first nominee, with Zack right behind him. On the women's side, Janelle revealed Amanda as the first nominee, but she admitted that picking the second one was a tough call, but ultimately went with Cindy. Amanda expressed her dedication to the competition and apologized to Ramsey and Brianna. Ramsey wasn't in the best mood when he asked Amanda what she should do when she's overwhelmed. Take control of my station. Which you didn't do. Barrett, on the other hand, felt like he could bounce back no matter how many times he was knocked down. Because for him, giving up wasn't an option. Ramsey definitely had a hell of a choice to make. I want to send all of you home. But in the end, this is what he decided. My decision is, Amanda, give me a jacket. Thank you. Her tuna meltdown, failure to bounce back, and her role in the women's inability to complete appetizers before the waltz sealed her fate. After Amanda's exit, Ramsey didn't mince words. He called the night a complete disaster and an embarrassment, and he made it clear that he wasn't finished dealing with them. And that is why I am not done. Nobody saw it coming. A double elimination. And who was this unfortunate contestant? Check this out. Barrett, give me your jacket. Your time is done in house kitchen. That was definitely a hell of a crushing defeat. Talk about getting your hopes up. Moving on to the seventh dinner service from the fifth season. Jay was assigned to the fish station. The first major hiccup of the night was when both kitchens realized that their rice was overcooked. Jay took responsibility for the rice, but even with that admission, they weren't off to a pleasant start. As a result, Ramsey decided to yank the risotto off the menu for the night outright, which really put on the pressure. How can you do that, Jay? Jay! Jay's troubles didn't end here, though. His salmon dish was his next victim. Or rather, the poor customers that had to actually eat the stuff. Look, it's still stone cold. Back in the oven. Fucking hell. Uh, Jay, I know you're busy, buddy. How long on salmon, my man? Ramsey, already on edge, made it clear that Jay was heading down a dark path. His struggles with timing and consistent cooking were plain as day. And Ramsey had every right to be frustrated. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I'll fucking turn it on right now, chef. I can't fucking go any further. Please wake up. Yes, chef. The message was loud and clear. Jay needed to step up or he would be shown the door. Unfortunately, things took a final turn for the worse when Jay sent out scallops in the blue kitchen. And they were overcooked and had the texture of rubber. Definitely not what you want out of your scallops. Ramsey had seen enough. He asked the entire team to take a look at the travesty. Oh my god! Unbelievable! No, 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 no! No! And then he made the call to eliminate Jay on the spot. Get out! 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 Get your jacket off and f off! I guess I don't belong here, so I'll be going home. Wow, just look at his face. He was disgusted, disappointed, and defeated. And I'm sure there are a hundred other D words that I'm not thinking about. In the aftermath, Jay left his jacket in the pantry, collected his belongings from the dorms, and exited through the loading area for a cab ride. During his exit interview, he expressed his disappointment with his Hell's Kitchen journey, but also mentioned his determination. Well, in a bit of a passive-aggressive manner, that is. Now it's time to move on and get my own restaurants going. 
you know? I don't need Chef Ramsay's opinion anymore. I've got it. Tomorrow's another day. Let's do it. You do you, Jay. You do you. Now, in season 12, we saw another shocking elimination. Let's cover the events that led to it. The first domino to fall was when Gabriel was assigned with the task of handling the fish station during the 16th dinner service. Right out of the gate, things got a bit messy. When the blue team got their first order, he got all mixed up with the scallops. So I got one, 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 one set of uh, scallops, Jason, or two? It's two scallops. It was like he was all talk and no action. To add to the chaos, Gabriel decided to walk up with scallops that Rochelle knew weren't on order. Quickly, 30 seconds, come over. Why'd you pull them? Come on, Gabriel. Where is it, Chef? Where is it? 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 Oh my god. But hold on, Gabriel managed to bounce back. He finally got his act together and presented some decent scallops that Ramsey could accept. Scallops, used to cook. Service. Phew. That was a close call. Now, here comes the big moment. A 10 tops appetizer order. Gabriel knew this was a massive deal for Ramsey, but when both teams marched up with their appetizers to the pass, Ramsey was not happy at all. He saw that Gabriel's scallops were overcooked and rubbery from like a mile away. And as a result, Ramsey had to serve an incomplete order. Definitely a huge blow to his pride and even his reputation. The upside table have been served, and I'm begging you for the scallops. Yes, sir! Sure. Luckily, Gabriel got a second chance with a refire, and this time, it passed muster. As if that wasn't enough, though, the 10 tops entree order rolled in, and Ramsey laid down the law. He warned Gabriel not to mess up like he did with the appetizers. You could practically feel the heat rising. Oh, come on, come on, I'm back, I'm back. Still, my boy went and cooked the salmon and the halibut in the same pan. Because, you know, why not? You could sense that Gabriel was questioning every single life decision that led up to this moment. Gabriel needed a miracle, but it never came. When he brought up the salmon, it was dry, and he didn't have any other spare that were ready to go. Ramsey was far from pleased with this, obviously. You ready to go? No, no chef. chef! Wake up! Yes, Chef. Gabriel decided to give it another shot and worked on his third attempt. Jason offered to help because Gabriel was clearly struggling. He believed he could bounce back just like he did earlier in the night, and this time, Ramsey accepted his third attempt. But when the next order came in, Gabriel decided to ignore Jason's suggestion of adding stock to the salmon, which didn't sit well with his teammate. And then, disaster struck again. Gabriel walked up with raw salmon. There were just so many mistakes in this one single service. Just when Gabriel thought he was headed back to the dorms, Ramsey dropped the death sentence. Get out! That was rough. But at least JP showed him some grace. Sorry, man. It was a pleasure. Listen, pleasure was ours. But that was before rubbing salt into his wound. Instead of getting a black jacket, they took my blue jacket. Anyone else feel bad for this guy? Or is it just me? Up next, meet the first returning contestant to have been eliminated during service, Josh Travato. So during the fifth dinner service in season 17, he was on the garnish station. His first order came from the bar menu, but then he disappeared for a bit to fetch some bowls for the fries. Right here, chef. Come on! I'm glad you can walk around so slowly. Hey, yes, chef. Have you switched off? No, chef, I'm not. Wrong. He was struggling on a simple bar menu. His fish was too dark. Bar food. I need bar food out. Are you okay? I'm fine, chef. Come on, man, please. Yeah, I'm trying. Despite the hiccups, though, his bar food was finally accepted. However, as the night rolled on, he found himself in yet another world of trouble. He was asking where the eggs had gone for the garnish, and Ramsey's patience was wearing thin, because the main dishes were already at the pass. To make matters worse, Ramsey discovered that his spinach was too watery and his mashed potatoes were 
uh, see it for yourselves, guys. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it justice. I've now got, look at that, that's liquid. So, yeah. Uh, later, he even got into a little tiff with Manda when she tried to help him out on Garnish. Elise had to play peacemaker and told him to quit arguing. And that's how you know things were disturbingly wrong. Are you working the station? Can I work the station then? Well, then work it! Either way, we need Garnish! Stop arguing and put the food up! Elise and peacemaker in the same sentence. Impossible! After that, he decided to work on the lobster garnish, but sous chef Christina reminded him of a little something. What lobster? Put the lobster on! Mash! Get the mash ready! I got it! It's ready! Will you stop yelling? And then came the big one. The Wellington's in the window! Where's the garnish? It's in my hand, chef. In your hand. Ice cold. I'm doing my best, chef. Oh, man, the hits keep coming. Yeah, Ramsey caught him holding ice-cold potatoes in his hands. He wasn't pleased, especially since the Wellingtons were already sitting at the pass. Even though he argued that he was giving it his all, Ramsey didn't buy it. Your best is not good enough. Say goodbye. Get out! As he trudged back to the dorms, he had a moment of reflection. He apologized to Ramsey for letting him down and felt like his team had treated him like an outsider. Back in the dorms, Josh had a real moment of reckoning. He realized that he had given up his entire life to come back to the competition. I have to go back. I gotta tell Chef Ramsey that I'm not done. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to come back. Something like what Joy did, except she quit voluntarily and, oh, Ramsey had faith in her. But guess what? Josh's sudden return baffled the red team. Wait, what did, what are you doing here? Two hand of a five, yes? Follow my two lobster one. What are you doing here? I need to be here, chef. Ramsey took him to the pantry for a little bit of a conversation. Josh was adamant that he wanted to return, but Ramsey had some tough love to share. Protein in the window, ice cold garnish in your hand. Yes, sir. What more can I personally do? Big heart, talented guy, but you are not ready to become my head chef in Vegas. While Ramsey appreciated Josh's culinary talents, he dropped the bombshell. Give me a jacket now. Yes, sir. I wish you well. Front door. Josh received Ramsey's well wishes, and Marino escorted him out through the front entrance. If anybody's gonna get a third chance, it would be me. Well, I'm sure nobody wants him back for another season. While some people claim that he was bullied by the red team, truth is, he antagonized them. Well, he kinda brought all those problems with other people on himself. It wasn't anyone else's fault. He is the one who said mean stuff, messed with stuff, and got on everyone's nerves during punishments. He even gave Manda a hard time. Nobody on either team forced him to act that way. And let's not forget, he was bullying Nick too. Anyway, which Josh, according to you, had a more embarrassing exit? This one or our very own Spaghetti King? With that, let's close out with a fan favorite. Peter. So Peter was holding down the garnish station during the fifth and what would be his final service in season 19. Things started to get a little rocky about an hour into the service. He seemed to be a bit lost when it came to cooking the tomatoes and Cody had to step in and explain the process to him. I mean, nobody likes a cooking tutorial in the middle of dinner service. Garlic towards the back, tomatoes towards the flame, hurt? Whether you're giving it or getting it. And just as you'd expect, his teammates were getting pretty worried, and rightfully so. Peter's frantic on Garnish. I think that Garnish is too big of a monster station for him. Ramsey noticed that Peter wasn't communicating with his team, so he had to nudge him to start talking with them. However, things took another wrong turn when Peter called out six minutes for a Garnish that Adam only needed four minutes for. Talking to you. Six minutes, yes, chef. I'll be ready. I'm, it's I'm, four minutes. Right, four We're minutes. counting down now. I'm ready. Peter also had a hiccup with the mashed potatoes. He was late serving them. And when he did send them up, he had no clue about what came next, even though Josh had already told him that it was his responsibility. All right, what am I, what do I have up next? Um, it's you, man. That's, you're, you're, you're the director. Oh, my God. 
Ramsey had enough of the basic mistakes in the blue kitchen. He gathered the entire blue team at the front and told them to cut the nonsense. Is there anyone here who can't lead? It's not chef. No. Have you got the qualities to become a head chef at Lake Tahoe? While most of the team said they believe they had what it takes, Peter was remarkably honest. Yes, yes, chef. No, chef, I don't. You haven't? I don't. He flat out denied everything. And with that, Ramsey eliminated him right on the spot. Take your jacket off and fuck off. You see, well, Ramsey didn't pay much heed to the guy, I respect the hell out of him. During his exit interview, he mentioned that he didn't feel ready to become an executive chef, especially if it meant going through the kind of mental stress that he just experienced. I don't believe that every executive chef that's established in the world has gone through all this mental pain and like negativity. I have never seen a chef on Hell's Kitchen admit so calmly that they just didn't have what it takes in the middle of service. The first time I saw it, I was blown away to actually hear a chef say no when Ramsey asked if they had what it takes to win it all. I totally respect Peter for knowing his limits and understanding when to admit that he's not ready. And moreover, just not willing to put himself through the mental anguish that Hell's Kitchen throws chefs into. It takes a lot of courage and understanding to do that. What's more, Peter didn't get the usual coat hanging and portrait burning sequence until a later episode. It was a tough exit for him, shocking for us, but he left with his reasons and his head held high. So maybe not a fan favorite, but he's got a place in my heart. So can you think of more times when chefs made absolutely insane exits from the show? If one of my daughter's boyfriends turns out to be vegetarian, I swear to God I'd never forgive them. Any guesses as to who made this claim? Yup, Gordon Ramsay back in 2008. But believe me, it gets even more ridiculous than that. By the way, Ramsay also proudly declared, my biggest nightmare would be if the kids ever came up to me and said, dad, I'm a vegetarian. Then I would sit them on the fence and electrocute them. Whoa, easy there, chef. At that time, he got flack from even the likes of Paul McCartney, who called him stupid, and also said that everyone should turn vegan. Well, Mr. McCartney, let me just say, let it be, let it be, let it be. But hold on, I hear you asking, isn't this supposed to be a Hell's Kitchen episode? Not a real life retrospective? So why am I telling you all this? Well, because of her. Because I'm vegan, I did do a vegan dish. It is an herbal tonic soup, it has healing properties. No thanks. I mean, why would anyone living a vegan life sign up for a show that's not even close to being vegan friendly? There's like zero chance that you'd be able to win. And on top of that, the prize was head chef at a steakhouse. Let's be real here. If Josie had won, who knows what kind of a mess she'd make in a place like that. But before I go into more details of how she messed up, let me give you a quick rundown about what Ramsay had to say about it. Now, Ramsay's beef with vegans is well known. No pun intended. He's a big advocate for eating meat and animal related products. And he's had his fair share of clashes with vegans online. Not that long ago, he got into a spat with at that vegan teacher, who definitely fits the bill of the kind of person Ramsey doesn't take too kindly to. At that vegan teacher took offense to Ramsey promoting meat eating on TikTok. So she decided to express her views through a ukulele song. God, that's the most TikTok sentence I've ever said. Anyway, she said, or well, sung, eating animals is wrong, Gordon Ramsay, hurting animals is wrong, Gordon Ramsay, and if you call me a donut, that's fine, as long as you're a vegan from now on. Rhyming Gordon Ramsay with Gordon Ramsay. Huh, old strategy there. Anyway, Ramsay's response became one of his most watched TikTok videos. It shows him sitting at a table, calmly munching on a piece of lettuce, while at that vegan teacher sings her song. He seems to be listening to the lyrics, nodding along as he eats his greens, but then, right at the end of the video, he spits out the lettuce, stares into the camera, and calls the woman a vegan donut. He then grabs a massive burger from off camera and starts going to to town on it. Undoubtedly, that move outraged vegans worldwide. Back in 2022, another TikTok video of his created quite a stir, hitting the headlines and catching the attention of PETA. Yeah, it's never a fun day when PETA gets involved. 
Anyway, they urged Ramsey's five kids to disown him. This came after he posted a video pretending to select a lamb for the slaughter. But time for some good news. See, Ramsey used to be totally against veganism and wasn't shy about making it known. But lately, he's had a change of heart. However, this shift didn't sit well with Piers Morgan. Oh, for sake, Ramsey. Not you too. This looks utterly revolting. He wrote on Twitter. This was in response to the news that Ramsey's restaurant, Bread Street Kitchen in London, was planning to serve a vegan roast dinner. Ramsey didn't just brush off Morgan's comment, though. He said, So Piers Morgan is now a food critic. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Go and <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, what were we talking about again? Oh, right, Hell's Kitchen. Coming back to Josie, she seemed all right, until her veganism became a total mess for her team. She went and threw a load of lobster butter into her team's dish, then acted like it wasn't her problem because, well, it wasn't vegan. But that wasn't all. If you remember, in the relay challenge in season 20, Josie faced a tough situation during round two when she opted for lobster butter to make the salmon sauce. I'm using lobster butter. Because I'm vegan, I'm at a slight disadvantage because I can't taste it. When the sauce came out salty, Josie claimed that she made the sauce without seasoning it. I finished the sauce, but I did not season it. Oh, it is way too salty. Lobster butter is really salty. Keanu pointed out that lobster butter is inherently salty, but Josie defended herself. I'm not gonna taste things that have meat in it, but now I know to have people taste stuff, lesson learned, it's not happening again. I mean, come on, at least let your team try it out. You can't just refuse to taste and refuse help, and then act like it's no big deal. Seriously, where's the accountability? This back and forth left Keanu utterly disappointed. Josie's starting to realize that being a vegan can hurt a lot in the long run. I mean, the sauce ruined it for everything. She is right. In the previous challenge, Josie prepared a Chinese breakfast featuring sticky rice and chicken stir fry. But unfortunately, the dish got panned for overwhelmingly tasting like soy sauce. And she was just as defensive then, too. Damn. Do you taste that? I did, Chef. However, after Ooh. I put in the slurry and mm. I had chicken juice. So this admission led Emily to comment under her breath, suggesting it was a rookie mistake. Now, Emily wasn't Ramsey's favorite either. Oh, I'm a full-time vegetarian. Come on. Two times, Chef. <laughs> but at least Emily knew this. But in the kitchen, in the kitchen, I'll taste the food because right. I think that's very important. It is important, yes. you're right. Meanwhile, Trenton found the humor in the situation. <laughs> I can't believe you wouldn't try your own food. It's because it has chicken in it. So, what's your take on all this? Anyone up for a vegan HK season? <laughs> Get in the comments and let me know. But what happened during the three-course meal challenge in season two was just as ridiculous, if not more. So, for this challenge, Keith paired up with Garrett, maybe thinking he needed some extra help. Me and Garrett are gonna do both together over here next to each other. I didn't want to put too much responsibility on Garrett. He was definitely onto something. Garrett was the first guy from the blue team to face Ramsey's judgment. He went head to head with Sarah, serving up a roasted corn, scallop and shrimp bisque. But Ramsey, always with that eagle eye, noticed something off about the dish. If I'd swallowed that, I'll be on the way to hospital. He forgot how sharp the shrimp tail was. Ramsey warned Garrett about it, but Garrett argued back. If you order shrimp, Guess what you automatically assume? That there's gonna be a tail on there, old Gordo. Anyway, when the blue team lost the challenge, Garrett's mood went south real fast. He didn't hold back and started ranting about how Ramsey got it all wrong. He judged wrong. Period. He even got the whole blue team on board with plotting revenge against the red team. I hope they have fun with their consolation prize. None of those three will be in the finals. Talk about sour grapes, right? And then, when the red team went ahead with their reward, Garrett lost his cool completely. Oh, are they flipping us off? Yeah, he flipped them the bird, not realizing that Ramsey was watching the whole thing go down. Garrett flipped off Chef Ramsey, which I don't think that was a good idea. You bet it wasn't. The next day, Ramsey called him out over it. Get me this. Do you want to go? No. Garrett tried to play it off, saying he didn't mean anything by it, but Ramsey wasn't having it. I never, ever want to see that in front of my face again. Let's get that clear. Garrett really crossed a line by dissing Ramsey's judgment and flipping off the red team. 
If you ask me, I think he might be one of the worst losers the show has had the displeasure of featuring. When the women returned from their reward, Garrett made a really underhanded comment that rubbed Heather the wrong way. I want to keep talking. Y'all women have dinner ready for us men when we get home from work. <laughs> Heather got seriously upset because she saw it as disrespectful, which it was. Garrett turns and says, go home and cook our dinner like women should. She didn't hold back and went off about how angry it made her, confiding in the other women on the patio. Get in there and cook for us if like, we work so hard and we're coming back from work. Have our dinner ready. By the way, Hell's Kitchen has been rightly criticized by a lot of viewers for perpetuating misogyny. Add this moment to the list. Props to Heather, though. She stood her ground and was clear about how he had no right to talk to her like that. I'm not your wife. I'm not your girlfriend. You yeah. don't... Like here, here. Later on, Garrett and Heather had a chat about his sexist comment. He tried explaining himself, saying he wouldn't let anyone, regardless of gender, disrespect him. But Heather still wasn't having it. She felt like he didn't get it and hoped he'd reap what he had sown come judgment. I just don't appreciate anybody talking shit to me. A part of life is fucking respect. Bro, nobody was disrespecting you. It's simple. You were jealous and petty and couldn't handle your loss. Seriously, the way he talked down to the women by suggesting they should be cooking really got under my skin. It was sexist, plain and simple. When Heather called him out on it, Garrett fell short in explaining himself. Like, come on, have a little bit of empathy. Anyway, the dude was arrogant and confrontational right from the start. If I think Chef Ramsay's being an asshole to be an asshole, I'll be an asshole myself. During the signature dish challenge, Garrett stepped up as the eighth contestant to present his dish to Ramsey. Right off the bat, Ramsey wanted to get to know Garrett's cooking background a little better, to which Garrett shared a surprising revelation. The first cooking job I had was in a jail. When Garrett presented his unknown meat dish, Ramsey's mood took an unexpected turn, and he invited Gabe over to taste it too. This move seemed like Ramsey was setting up a test of honesty. Gabe played his part perfectly and revealed the meat was overcooked. It was a little overdone for me, chef. It was overcooked. Yes, chef. Garrett's response to Gabe's feedback was, as should be obvious in hindsight, confrontational, as he initially challenged the accusation. I'm so mad that somebody could just boldly lie to my face. However, Ramsey confirmed Gabe's assessment, calling the meat dry, but not before acknowledging and praising Gabe's honesty. It's very dry. So far, some really shit cooks, but one honest one. Garrett needed so many reality checks. He's gotta be up there with some of the most illusional chefs on the show. Hey, there's a video idea. Now, I can't believe that by at least season 13, why these chefs once cast didn't learn how to make a damn risotto. I'm talking about Janai. Only Chef Ramsey can take something that looks like a dildo and turn it into a $150 plate. Yeah. Her. During her second dinner service, Janai was handling the appetizer station alongside Ashley, ready to nail the risotto. But things went south fast. She was focused on getting her risotto just right, but forgot the most important part. Talking to her teammates, Deneen and Katie, when they tried to coordinate timing. And that left them seriously annoyed. How long is that risotto? Janae, how long? I'm asking Janae for five I'm not getting any answers. Anyway, when Janai finally sent out her risotto, it was super mushy. It's like baby food, it's mush. Ramsey, in classic Ramsey style, made the women taste it before dropping the bomb. Janae is overcooked. Yes, sir. Not by two minutes, but by 10 minutes. Yeah, imagine that. It was overcooked by a whole 10 minutes. That goes way beyond mere negligence. Her second attempt didn't fare much better. It was way too soupy this time around. And that really set Ramsey off. It's soup. It's just too much liquid. Here, Jeff. Sit down. It's too soupy. Honestly, Ramsey, I'd describe your frozen mushroom risotto at Walmart in the same way. Glass houses and all that. Anyway, as she tried for a third time, she still wasn't cueing Deneen properly. Yeah, I'm ready. You're ready on risotto? Yes. The wall? Yes. And when she sent out her next risotto, Ramsey was beyond done with her. Stop! Time out! Time out! Marina, yes, get in there. Yeah, Ramsey was so pissed that he brought in Marino to taste it. And surprise, surprise. You're Italian, taste that f shit. 
Mushit risotto. Mushy. Mushy. It was mushy again. Ramsey was through with them, and he sent the women to sort out their issues in the pantry, issuing an ultimatum for good measure. Have a fucking meeting and sort it out. But when you walk back in that kitchen, if anyone hasn't got their shit together, game over. Finally, as a result of the threats, and after some proper communication with Deneen, they managed to send out their first table of appetizers. Round of applause. Anyway, Janai found herself as the first nominee for elimination from the red team, followed by Deneen. They joined Sterling and Fernando from the blue team on the chopping block. When it was her turn to plead her case, Janai only owned up to overcooking the first risotto, conveniently overlooking the entire rest of the service. I overcooked the risotto, and Sorry. that's all it was. That's all it was, did yes, you just say? Her elimination came down to her weak performance on appetizers, and her refusal to admit to the full extent of her mistakes. Janai's reluctance to acknowledge the series of errors she made during the service played a big part in sealing her fate. My chef Ramsey made a mistake. Nobody in that kitchen is better than me. Chef Ramsay may not know it. Man, the overconfidence, right? All the while screwing up the most basic stuff. Ramsay summed it up best. Cooking risotto is elementary, but tonight I found out Janae is still in kindergarten. Now gear up for the most ridiculous elimination plea ever. I love to cook. I love to, uh, to make things taste really good. Trust me, Ramsey was looking at him in utter disbelief. Like, is that the best you can come up with, Tony? I feel like the Hell's Kitchen community often glosses over Tony's performance and his elimination because of Mr. I ain't no bitch and his outburst. But Tony was hilariously bad. During prep before the second service, he screwed up big time. He encountered difficulty while attempting to slice a grapefruit. Yes, a grapefruit, prompting Kevin to offer assistance. However, Tony wasn't receptive at all. See how they go in at an angle? Yeah. All right, angle. It's like, come on now, I can cut a grapefruit. You don't have to do it for me. No, you don't. Shortly after, Ramsey noticed Tony's lack of focus while holding the grapefruit. Ramsey advised Tony on using the proper technique, emphasizing the importance of cutting the fruit over a bowl to preserve its juice. Oh, fuck. Hallelujah. You look like you're freeze frame there, you know? Uh. Master impersonator strikes again. Despite Ramsey's guidance, he failed again. Shocker. Why is it like a hexagon? That was a bad grapefruit. Uh, I'll, I'll, you're blaming the grapefruit. Uh, no, I'm not. No. That crash course in grapefruit cutting really didn't help in the long run. Tony was in the weeds before it even started. He looked like he was going to wet himself. A rare moment where I completely agree with him. As the team prepared for service, Tony lagged behind while everyone else readied their stations. Tony! Over a bowl. Ah, over a bowl. Shit. Ramsey, growing increasingly impatient, instructed Tony twice to correctly cut the grapefruit over a bowl. You little f I'm this close to kicking you out. You're making me a little bit nervous. During the dinner service, Tony was assigned to the fish station. When Ramsey called out the first ticket, Tony's excitement to prepare scallops took over. And without consulting anyone, he went ahead and started cooking them. I love cooking fish. I was just so pumped that I just wanted to cook right away. Just like Raj, except without half his charm. Ramsey, noticing this, questioned why he acted without confirming the order with the team. Jim backed Ramsey up and clarified that scallops hadn't been requested to be cooked yet. Ramsey took the opportunity to continue Tony's impromptu education. The lesson? Communication. Come here, you little prick. So you bring the fucking scallops, he hasn't got the chimp in the pan, and the capolini just got in, you dick. In his signature style, of course. While rectifying the error by preparing the scallops again, Tony managed to maintain a positive attitude. However, on his second attempt, despite claiming he was ready, the scallops turned out undercooked. You got better vision than anybody with those four eyes of yours. Look at that. It's stone cold and it's raw. Ramsey was so mad that he questioned Tony's capabilities. Can you cook? Yes, chef. What can you cook? Anything, chef. You are dreaming. Move, Tony, huh? Damn right he was. Moments later, Ramsey called out an order, specifically asking for the halibut to be prepared immediately. Now, wait now, I want halibut one chicken. Yes, yeah, chef. I want one now. Do you want the halibut now? Oh, my God. However, Tony initially misunderstood Ramsey's request, prompting Ramsey to repeat it. Tony placed the halibut in the pan, but Ramsey quickly noticed something was off. 
didn't season the fish. I always season it. I didn't season it though. Oh my god. What? I mean, why? Due to this mistake, Kevin had to step in and take charge of the fish station once again. To make matters worse, Ramsey noticed that four of Tony's teammates were supporting him on his station, yet he still failed to maintain control over it, leading to this glorious moment. I know we all want to try to take charge. I don't want to take charge. Would you just shut the f*** up for a minute? Fuck. You're like chickens right now. Chickens, you hear that? Tony's mistakes were obvious, but that plea alone would have sent anyone home, right? Now, there are a bunch of other moments I found ridiculous, like when Alex, one of the best winners of the show, used his punishment pass to go bowling. Like, my dude, there were so many other great rewards you passed up on for something as basic as that. It was like when Brett used his punishment pass for that dumb movie, or should I say, to spy on the other team. Which moment from the show did you find ridiculous? Make sure to share them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on my post notifications, and make sure to check out this next video right here. Trust me, it's worth your time.